Hi there. This is a special guest model, Teeny, that I did work on for Jeremy Patterson. It's at Fat Pat Film on Twitter, who I've linked in the description. He gave permission for me to make videos of what I did for him, so I'm going to go ahead and show you all two ways to do this Afro Puff hairstyle, one with and one without the base hair. My last video has a more in-depth explanation of the sliders than what I'll be going into here, but it shouldn't be too hard to follow even if you haven't seen it, I think. Starting with the height parameter as low as it can go so I have fewer points to worry about and speed things along a bit, just so you know. The base of the puff is what you're going to be working on first, so the mesh framework needs to be close to the head. I made it spread out a little bit for that springy floaty effect that afro coils are known for, but all that really matters is you have a spot where the base of your puff meets the top of the head. Lining up the center of the puff should be extra easy if you're using the base hair because it has a sort of area toward the back where the hair looks like it's being pulled to. No extra drawing required. When using the diamond or filled triangle cross sections, by the way, be careful with adjusting the curve of the hair, because moving the last point anywhere other than the bottom of the curve will open the end of the hair and make these weird polygons visible. Transparent ends on your texture will not remove that, so just watch out for it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, goodness. Uh, to take these shapes from flat slabs to coils, you use the twist sliders. Amplitude ups the twist frequency, and interval changes where the twists go. I put them closer to the ends because I want the most visible twists there. Upping thickness and width will add volume to the coils and take some of the extreme polygonal look away. From there, you just need to tweak the mesh frame and play with that in sliders until you're satisfied with the overall look of the bottom layer. You'll notice this is a procedural group, which is much easier to modify on the fly than a uh, freehand group. Uh, you can hand draw the strands, but procedural groups will take a lot less time to make the overall puff, since you can just clone groups and tweak the mesh frame and hair count to add extra sections on top of one another, so all the strands will be similar consistency. It saves you from having to mess with settings for each group too much, playing with too many sliders. Uh, at this point, by the way, side note, upping the smoothness is probably tempting, but I've noticed performance issues with high smoothness on lots of hair, so I suggest you avoid doing that this early and focus instead on getting the right shape through the width and thickness sliders. You can always adjust it later if your computer doesn't start chugging. Now, if you do use procedural layers like I do, when it's time to add new ones, you just clone the group, expand the mesh so it sits on top, um, and then I changed the strand number and alternated between an even and odd number of strands and rotated it just a little bit to get that nice overlap effect with some natural asymmetry. It is not required to do that by any means, but I think it looks really nice. Uh, you can just leave the hairs the same and rotate it a little bit and they'll overlap too. When you get to about halfway up your intended puff size, you should start doing the top and bottom as different hair clusters and then tweak your mesh frame so the top and bottom meet together in a sort of V shape. Then when you're ready to top off your, um, your hair puff, you can have a few hairs that spring out of the middle gap, and it'll round out your puff nicely. I made this one sit in such a way that it looks like gravity weighs on these thick coils, but obviously you can do what you want with that for the look of the character you're trying to make. Mesh frame editing can get tricky and confusing when you're inverting the up and down directions, uh, close to the top as you'll see here in a second, so just make sure that you take it slow and make it as easy on yourself as possible separate things out wherever you need them to be. Now, if you don't intend to use the default base hair for whatever reason, make sure that the actual texture of your character's skin reflects the tone you want rather than using the color boxes within Vroid Studio itself. The way Vroid Studio changes colors is basically overlaying that color to the texture. So for that reason, I always set the Vroid Studio color to white and retexture the body itself with separate hair layers for editing ease. This also makes it so if I have to export the model, the colors will come through correctly. Um, now to add a little bit of, um, let's see, several layers. To add a little bit of bonus curl, you can make the texture ends for the hair transparent. Just make sure you set texture width to one and match both sides of the texture so there's no seam. Uh, as you can see right uh, here. Here we go. The uh, generate bone group function makes adding bones to hair like this really easy. You just set the number of bones to max, hit the button, and it should generate something that looks okay and moves okay. It won't be perfect, but it definitely speeds your process up. All you really have to do is go through and make sure each strand or group of strands moves the way you want it. Now, some strands might have their fixed points in weird places, some might not have enough bones for a nice motion, 
This length of hair I found does best with two to four uh, bones of moderate stiffness, so maybe like middle high range, and the fixed points will vary slightly by layer. Uh, typically, lower fixed point values will work best for hair sections that are more visible, but you may want to have a core in place where there's a higher fixed point value. You just tweak and test until you're happy with the result. Now, you can see how nicely this final edit moves in the wind. Note that this uh, was done on an older version of Vroid Studio than what's out now. They added a Z-axis in one of the recent-ish updates that makes it so the wind will push the hair left, right, up, down, and back and forth. Um, of course, you should also test with movements and posing, like I talked about in my last video. The best animations to check natural bounce and gravity for uh, hair hairstyles, excuse me, are walking and running, but jumps and poses will give you more extreme ranges to evaluate. Now, as you can see, Teeny's hair changed color suddenly. <laughs> uh, brown is the final iteration, but we really liked the pink too, and it works great for demonstration purposes, I think, so most of the video is done with the pink. Uh, anyway, I'm going to let this demo run, have a look in the description for a similar hair texture and grayscale that you're welcome to tweak and use freely for your own Vroid Studio experiments. I hope you learned something new here. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.